A modern day statistic is that almost all of the media outlets in America, that is approximately 90% of the media outlets in America are owned by six conglomerates. And those conglomerates are the National Amusements, Disney, Time Warner, Comcast, Nucor, and Sony. They take it upon themselves to give out information and they profess to give out the information that is true. Really, they seek to control the mind, but they are news outlets. I want to say tonight that the verse we have before us, it is the news source that I want to take up this evening. I want to speak today from the Bible, and more specifically, the news that is good or good news. The very word gospel is exactly that, good news. And so tonight we're going to take a look at the Bible, the word of God, and we want to see what God is telling us. Those of us that are here on earth, those that of us that have a Bible in our hand, the word of God. I know that it's a very vast subject. This evening from this verse that we have read together, I would like to notice five different aspects of the word of God. And when we come to these words, we're going to notice that it's a description, but it will help us to understand something of the gospel. Obviously, I'm from Mexico, and I do not know most or hardly any that might be uh, listening to the webinar this evening. I do not know what you know about the Bible. I don't know what you know about God. But I want to say this, that the Bible is a message from God. The Bible is the word of God. And for that reason, he has given it so that men and women and boys and girls could come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior, that they might understand the message that God has for them. And oh, how I wish that tonight someone might be able to understand very clearly that this is God's message for you. The very first thing that I want to notice about the word of God is that it says here the word of God is quick. And the word, it just means it's living. I want to say something, first of all, about the personification of the word of God. And personification simply is that there were characteristics of a person that were given to the word of God. But really, that is our English definition of the word personification. I want to tell you tonight that when God chose for us to have his word, there were times when he had sent it by prophets. There were times when he sent it by seers. There were times when God sent it by visions. But now God sends his word in a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. The personification of God's word is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so John, as he begins to write his gospel... He tells us this, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And so the word that God gives to us is his own son. He had spoken it in different ways, but now he says, I want to give them as it were a word picture. I want them to be able to see it. I want them to be able to not only uh, hear its vocabulary but I want them to see it in action. And so those many years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven above to earth beneath, and he walked among men, and he lived on the earth. And as he lived here, he was showing out, he was telling forth the person of God. And so the word of God, it was personified. But when I come to the matter that it's living, there's something more that I want to say about the Lord Jesus as the word of God, because ironically, the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world not so much to live, although he did that, he came to live. But the purpose of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was that he would die. And can I just say this? Maybe it's something very simplistic. But for a person to die, they've had to live. And so the Lord Jesus Christ comes down to earth and he lives. 
and he tells us God's word. And then there comes the time where the Lord Jesus Christ will die. In fact, the language of love of God himself is that when the Lord Jesus Christ came, he sent him because he so loved the world. Probably most often on this webinar, you've heard the words of the Lord Jesus in, in John chapter 3 and verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. And God's language of love is to give. And he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's living. It's the language of love. And so the Lord Jesus Christ comes and he goes to the cross of Calvary and he dies and is buried. And then he rises again from the dead. And so God is telling us by this word, the Lord Jesus Christ, he speaks to us in this word. I wonder tonight, can you can you see the word? Can, can you hear the word? Can you just take a look at the Lord Jesus? Because he's the one that's, that can save you. He's the one that has died and paid the price that you might be saved. And so it's living. It's a language of love that God is speaking. By way of action, the Lord Jesus Christ going to the cross of Calvary. Many years ago, there was a spiritual song that they sang about God writing his love. And he wrote his love in crimson red on the cross of Calvary where the Lord Jesus Christ died. And so tonight I want to tell you that God is speaking to you. The word of God is for you. He would like to talk to you. He would like to speak to you about this matter. He wants to tell you how much he loves you. He wants to tell you that he has done everything he can to save you. He would love to save you tonight. The language of love. But you see, when it comes to this word of God, I need to go quickly to the second thing I want to notice because I mentioned I would like to see five aspects of the word of God tonight. First of all, the personification of love because it says the word of God is quick. But secondly, it says the word of God is quick and powerful. I want to say something tonight about the power of the word of God. Not only about its personification that the Lord Jesus Christ came in person and he came so that you might understand God's message. He came as a human being so that you as a human being could relate. He came as a human being to live. He came as a human being to be able to die. And so the Lord Jesus Christ dies on the cross of Calvary. And tonight we can preach the gospel here from Midland Park to Earth's broad acres. That the Lord Jesus Christ can save souls this very night. But now the power, that is the energy that the word of God has. That God himself, God was energized. God was ready to go at it to be able to make sure that you could understand his word. I want to say something about this power of God. The word of God is powerful because the power of God will tell us of his program universally. That is that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so when God made the heaven and the earth and he created all time and he created all matter and he created all energy, and he created all space. In that very first verse of our Bible, his program universally. And do you know why God made the universe? Because God desired to have someone to express himself to. And so he has chosen you to be able to hear his word in the person of the Lord Jesus. But his power is not only demonstrated, or it's not only the program universally, God's power will tell us of his purpose globally. And when I say globally, now I'm talking about earth. Not, not the universe as a whole. This universe that we're still discovering. This universe that goes beyond the, the, the most powerful telescopes that man has. Now I want to talk about this globe. Oh, it's fine for science to teach us that the sun is the center of God's universe. But can I just suggest this to you this evening, that really in the heart of God, the center of his creation is earth. Because it was on this earth that man was. On this earth, 
is the place that the Lord Jesus Christ came to. And on this earth is the cross of Calvary where the Lord Jesus Christ died. And on this earth is the place where God saves souls. And in his heart, the center of his creation is the globe, the earth, the power of God's word. His power has to do with his program universally. His power has to do with his purpose globally. Can I say something just a little closer to home tonight? His power has something to do with his interest personally. God in heaven is looking down tonight. And he's looking down into the hearts of those that are listening to this gospel message. Could it be a home in New Jersey? Where someone is listening to this message. And I want to tell you tonight that God is interested in you. God would love to save your soul. Maybe there's someone. In the plains of the Midwest that's listening. And you wonder. In all the chaos of everything that's going around. That's going on in the world right now. What about it? I want to tell you that God is interested in you. This very evening, God from heaven, he desires that you would take him at his word, that you would just believe what he says. And God's purpose globally was that there might be a plan of salvation, that there might be a redemption for mankind because mankind is a sinner. And for that reason, God sends his son to do the work on the cross of Calvary that you might be saved forever. We come then to notice something about God's interest personally. When the Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross of Calvary, it wasn't just that he was thinking about all of the human race. It was that God himself was interested in you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary, had his mind on you. As he paid the price of sin. So tonight. The power of God's word. God is interested in you. And tonight. Could be the night of your salvation. I would like to say something. In relation to the next phrase that we have in this verse. Not only the personification of the word of God. It's quick living. Not only the power of the word of God, and it's powerful. But then he says, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Can I say something about the precision of the word of God? That, that is, it is exact. It is accurate. Not like the news that we hear around us. Not like everything that they're telling us in, in the way that they want to shape our minds to think. But God is telling us what is right. And God is telling us what is exact. And the word of God is accurate. Can I just say something about the word of God? It cuts to the quick. That is, God's word will tell us that we are sinners. And God wants us to understand that by our sin, we have offended him. And for that reason, we can never get into God's heaven. It cuts to the quick. He the word of God tells it like it is. The word of God gets to the point. Oh, I'm so thankful for the word of God that was taught to me as a young boy to understand what I needed in relation to my soul's salvation. But when it comes to this word of God, the, the verse says, and sharper than any two-edged sword, the two edges just mean that it is the two things that it tells us. Can I say it tells us the good and the bad? It tells us of the sinner 
and the Savior, the sinner, those of us that are here on earth, the Savior, the one that went to the cross of Calvary and is now in heaven, and he wants to save tonight. The word of God, it's a two-edged sword because it commends and it condemns. It commends as a matter of telling us that God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It condemns in that the word of God tells us for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Can I say it's a two edged sword because it it tells us of grace and truth. Oh, the grace of God that he sent the Lord Jesus Christ down to earth. That he might save forever. But the truth of the matter is that we as sinners before God need to accept what he says about us. The truth is that we're sinners. The truth is that a sinner will be lost forever if they die in their sins. And so the grace is that God would want to save you, the sinner. God wants to save the sinner. God wants to save all sinners. There are some sinners that think they're too good to be saved. There are some sinners that think they've done enough good that they really don't need to worry about what God is doing or what God would love to do. No, tonight, can I say to you, the grace and truth is this, that the Lord Jesus Christ in grace comes down and he knows the truth that we are sinners and he's still willing to save us. Oh, the grace of God that comes to us. But not only is it grace and truth, it's mercy and judgment. Two-edged sword, mercy and judgment. And the psalmist, he's going to have this picture in his mind when he comes to the cross of Calvary. Mercy is that God would love not to have to give out a punishment that is already deserved. Uh, while I don't deserve God's grace, I do deserve God's punishment, but, but in mercy, God has withheld that punishment up until now. And then the judgment is that God must punish sin. There's no way God can overlook it. There's no way God can just uh, turn his back on sin. But tonight, we come to the word of God, and it is mercy and judgment. What is that? That God who knew that he would need to judge sin, he would need to judge you for your sin. On the cross of Calvary, he poured out his judgment on those that needed. He poured out his judgment on the Lord Jesus as he became sin for us. And so the Lord Jesus takes the punishment for our sin. It's a two-edged sword. Oh, but can I tell you tonight, it tells of pardon and perdition. The two-edged sword. When we come to the heart of God, he wants to pardon you. He wants to forgive you all of your sin. I'm asking you tonight, could you accept God's word when he says that he would love to pardon you? Because those that will not receive his pardon, they go to perdition. They go to a lost eternity. The two-edged sword is pardon and perdition. God's word, the word of God, is the two-edged sword. It's both at once. Would you accept the pardon of the Lord Jesus tonight? Some years ago in Mexico, I read of a young man who was in the military, in the Mexican military, and near the border of the, U the United States and Mexico, there was uh, a certain event where they had to be, and at that event, this young man, he drew a pistol and he shot a general. And in the court martial, they condemned him. And in the Mexican military, the co uh, condemnation for homicide 
is capital punishment, but they haven't used capital, capital punishment for years, so it's automatically turned over to a life sentence. And so this corporal was given a life sentence, placed in prison. His mother was a lawyer, and she worked night and day. She worked hard to be able to get his freedom. And when Vicente Fox was president of Mexico, she pled with him that he would pardon her son. And Vicente Fox, he emitted the pardon. He signed the document where he was pardoning this soldier. And so the mother was overjoyed and she was there that day when they went to the prison to present her son with a pardon. She wanted to be there. And they presented her son with a pardon. And he said, I will not accept it. And she who had fought so much to get this pardon said to him, and why won't you accept it? And he said, because if I accept the pardon, I'm confessing that I'm guilty and I'm not guilty. If you were to ask the soldier, soldier, were you at the event? Yes. Soldier, did you draw your pistol? Yes. Soldier, did you fire the pistol? Yes. But I'm not guilty. The two-edged sword tonight is pardon or perdition. That young man is still living out his sentence because he would not accept the pardon. Tonight, could you accept the pardon that God offers you? The precision of the word of God. The fourth aspect that I want to deal with this evening is the perception of the word of God. Because here, the next phrase says, and piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The perception of God's word. The ability to see and to hear or, or to become aware of something through senses. Can I just say to you tonight, in relation to the perception of the word of God, this verse tells us that God knows. God knows all about you. In fact, God has registered every bad deed that you have ever done in a book in his heaven. God knows the word of God. It is, as it says here, it pierces, it goes deep. It goes to the bottom of your heart where there are things that no one else knows. God knows. The things that you want to hide from everyone, God already knows. The perception of the word of God, he knows. But can I suggest to you tonight that not only God knows, but God works. That is, that he's bringing it to your mind tonight by way of your conscience, that you might do something about it. Not to cover it up, to be lost. Not to try and do away with it, but to be conscious of what you have done. And God works. The Holy Spirit of God is bringing it to your mind tonight. That you might get to the cross of Calvary and be saved forever. Because when I come to the word of God, know all this or, or understand all this that God knows, what we've read from this verse tonight. He says, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. Oftentimes we describe that man is made of three parts, a body, soul, and spirit. And I suggest that this verse is telling us the only one that can tell the difference between soul and spirit is the word of God. It's the word of God that can get in there and divide. Sometimes we try to, uh, by by fancy vocabulary to say that there is a distinction and so on. Really, it's, it's the immaterial part of man, the soul and the spirit. But when we come here, God's word can do that. And God's word can get right into your soul. And God's word can convict you of your sin and take you to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. But not only that, it tells us that God's word judges. John chapter 12 and verse number 48 tells me that the word that the Lord Jesus Christ has spoken, that word will judge at the last day. I want to tell you of the value of God's word. 
I want to tell you of the vitality of God's word, but I want to tell you that God's word will be the judge in the last day. While there are news corporations that spread whatever they want, tonight God is telling you the truth, and he wants you to hear this good news, that you can be saved tonight, because God's word judges at the last day. I want to close by coming to this last aspect of the word of God that this word will tell us about that this verse is going to indicate to us, and that is the perpetuity of God's word. You know, news corporations today, some grow and some wane and some disappear altogether. It's just for now. It's the st statistics for now. But I want to tell you something about God's word. It's forever. It stands forever. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 8 is going to say to us, My word shall stand forever. And so, God, what he has given to us in his word, it isn't only for time. It's forever. And so the salvation that God offers me in his word, it's as good as his word. In other words, it's forever. But not only... Is it forever? Can I say that God's word, not only it stands forever, but it stands faithfully. All I'm seeking to say is that it's true. John chapter 17, verse 17 says, thy word is truth. It could be that you don't want to take in. You don't want to accept what God's word is telling you tonight. Whether you believe it or not, I say this with utmost respect. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. And it will not change. So God, while he will judge every sin, he wants to save every sinner. I wonder if you could be one of those sinners tonight. Not only does it stand forever and does it stand faithfully, but it stands finally. One of the last things we read in this word of God is an invitation for you to come to the Savior. And so God's word that lasts forever, it will be the final word, the final authority on all of us. Tonight, is there someone that would trust the Savior? Would you come to the Lord Jesus this very evening? He wants to save you. His word is true. He will save you. He will save you now. Forever. I do hope that someone tonight might just take God at his word, might just believe exactly what God says and accept it personally to be his forever.